Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. <laughs> welcome, welcome to all of you, um, and you guys too, and um, especially to our guests this morning. We're so glad you're worshiping with us today. Please fa turn to face the font. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. joined Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the water, and by your word, you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water, which sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. You be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
let us pray. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated.
I'm pooped after that song. <laughs> the first reading is from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear. Not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the first chapter of uh, Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Now, I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold, hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on, you, on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, 
but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. Dearly beloved, grace and peace to you from the living one, the Christ. Amen. If you travel to Florence, Italy, and walk from the train station down the old narrow streets toward the river, with the buildings tall around you and blocking your view, suddenly you emerge into a large plaza where the Duomo is, St. Mary of the Flower, a spectacular cathedral of marble in green, pink, and white. And just behind it and its tower and baptistry is a small museum filled with treasures rescued from the Duomo that might otherwise be destroyed by weather, by cold or heat, or the dampness of fall days. One of those treasures is a magnificent life-sized wood carving of Mary Magdalene by Donatello. She stands on a stone, her hands tented as in prayer, arms and legs strong and muscled. Her hair is very long and twisted and twines into animal furs that hang to her knees. But it's her face that is so compelling. Her facial bones stand out and her eyes are sunken in. And even though the work is in wood, those eyes beckon and plead. It's dark that first Easter morning, 
dark with grief and what is not known. Grief-stricken people, you've had those days when the sun could be shining brightly, but you just can't get warm. And then the day gets much worse for the women. The tomb is as empty as Mary's heart, and she runs for reinforcements. She knows where they're hiding. Peter and another disciple return with her, and they believe, the gospel says, but it doesn't tell us what they believe. There's nothing left but some pieces of cloth, so they go home. They believe, but not that Jesus was raised from the dead. Nobody thought that. So Mary Magdalene stands there, feeling betrayed. She only sees what's empty. And the most painful moments in our lives are like that, the place where the loved one sat, the roses they enjoyed, the phone call we don't make, the emptiness. Because we don't love in general, we love in particular those eyes, that hand, that voice. Mary just wanted to see him, to care for him, to wash him, to put spices on the one she loved, as was the custom. All four Gospels agree on almost nothing as to the details of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Luke's story of Jesus' birth is different from Matthew, and Mark doesn't even have that story. Neither does John. In Mark and John, Jesus just shows up when he's 30 years old. Of course, all the stories in the Gospels are about Jesus, but when and where and how and with whom he does things changes in every Gospel. Mary Magdalene is the exception. She's always at the crucifixion, and she is the first to bring news of the resurrection. Her love has been bottomless, and so is her grief. This image of Mary Magdalene doesn't leave me this week. Jane has been playing an old um, CD that she found in a pile, and there's a song about Mary Magdalene. And then I was reading a novel a couple of days ago, and she came up in the novel as well. Just as the memories of our loved ones can cling to us in these days of Holy Week and Easter when we're so immersed in death and life and mystery, Mary has been with me this week, clinging even as she tried to hold on to Jesus. Perhaps Donatello intended the carving to depict her with her seven demons, possessed and unkempt, skeletal, with her inability to care for herself, and so haggard and haunted, sinewy and strong, she holds out her hands pleading, and Jesus chases the demons away, frees her, she's transformed. After her healing, she will not leave Jesus' side. She and other women cared for the disciples, provided them with all the necessities. The church has relegated her to a role much less important for all kinds of reasons. But she was the one whose duty it was to stay by the cross, watch where he was taken to be buried, and then do for him what ought to be done when someone died. It's not unreasonable to think, as many do, she might have even been Jesus' wife. Yes, there are people who think that. Although there's another story of the same Mary from Magdala washing his feet and wiping them with her hair, and I think if it was a wife, she'd say, get those dirty feet out of my kitchen. <laughs> but the Bible doesn't tell us that. We just know Jesus was the center of Mary's life until this dark day when they've taken him away and she can't even find him. And those things that pursued her, that Jesus kept at bay, begin to circle. And I imagine her standing for the second time, as she does in that museum, hollow-eyed, hands before her, weeping, searching, until he calls her by name, Mary. And once again, she is transformed. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was made flesh and lived among us, abided among us. And water changed to wine, and a good shepherd called her name, and the promises of God would dawn on her and rest in this exploded, 
upside down universe where a man who was once dead was no longer in his tomb. In my father's house there are many rooms. I am the vine, you are the branches. I will not leave you orphaned. You will share in the love of God just as I do. You will share the love of God just as I do. Light and truth and abundant life. The instant she recognizes him, she is once again transformed, but this time she can't hold on to him. Rather, she becomes him, becomes a little part of him. She is transformed into the first bearer of that good news of resurrection. I don't know what your path was to this day, but I wouldn't be surprised if you came like Mary did to the tomb with very poor expectations. Of course, we know it's Easter, but we need this day and we need spectacular signs and reminders because everything in our mutual worldliness, Mary's and our own, leads us to believe we will only find taxes and debt. But whatever it is that pursues you today, whether a legion of demons, or whether fears of illness or aging, failure of the future, regrets, something from the past, something done or left undone, something unresolved or a grief that fogs the brightest of your days or anxieties that paralyze you and make you miserable. No matter what you pursue and no matter what pursues you, Easter has come. The tomb is empty. He calls you by name. He has the power over whatever runs after you. He dispels the darkness. And you, like Mary Magdalene, are transformed into his body. You are given the promises of God, and in a way, you become the promises of God as he is in you and you are in him. He intrudes upon all our death dealing and the word is made flesh and water turns to wine and all the promises are yours. Light and truth and abundant life. So if you like Mary are still seeking, you are in the right place exactly. He is calling your name. He's not in a tomb somewhere. We actually know where to find his body. God, forgive us, we are it. We are it. We are now the body of Christ, which is given for the world. Christ is risen, and you don't find him. He has already found you. Amen.
confess our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, Virgin Mary, and became true human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will come. the Lord, giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son worship and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church, where the church is persecuted, protect it. Where the church is privileged, grant it humility. Where the church is fractured, heal it. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in our world, God of grace. Life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life, that together we may proclaim Easter hope, God of grace. Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day. God of grace. Amen. Loving God, we pray for this community of faith, Lakeside community, and for your spirit in our midst. Feed us at your Easter table and fill us with your wisdom that we may serve and care for others. God of grace. Gracious God, we rejoice in the life you give us now and forever. We give thanks for the saints, especially Loleen Anderson, God of grace. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another. Your monetary gifts help our congregation with its work here in this space and in our outreach to the community and the world. So we give thanks to you for those gifts. And let's pray together the offering prayer. Risen One, call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. 
through Jesus Christ, our truth. Blessed are you, O God, of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to a land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit with your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy trinity, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table.
Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. It is time for announcements, and I hope that everyone making them will be merciful to all of you sitting here. <clears throat> Many thanks, though, to musicians, altar guild, worship committee for making the worship so beautiful this morning and making the space so beautiful and tending to the many little things that happen behind the scenes. Thank you so much. And many thanks to those of you who, um, who donated flowers for the garden. So much appreciated. Any other announcements? L Linda, you wanted people to wait until next Sunday to pick up flowers, correct? Anything else? <laughs> 